This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Honokoropy. But before that, this video is brought to you by Joel G and LCHL32. Thank you for being Farm Baron. So the Honka Koropi map can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the one point of release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a little bit of the description. This is a fictional map with finished style, mainly focused on forestry, but there are still some fields to farm. A trans train station cell point that you need to load products onto the train, 34 fields, lots of forest, Three farms made ready for use, sawmill, custom soil map, water can be taken from the lake, multi-terrain angle for PC players, sugar beet, cotton, olive, and grapes have been removed from the map, and special thanks to INF Modding for giving him permission to use INF Modding's base map as an inspiration for this map's production. Now this map does have two required mods. So in addition to the mods that we typically use when take a look at maps, which are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming, we are also going to be making use of the finished farm buildings, as well as the wooden liquid manure tank mods. Now we'll tell you if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find all the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farm mode. With the exception of the fact that you do not own any land in those game modes, nor do you start out with any starting machinery. Now, in addition to the custom soil map that was mentioned in the description, this map also has a custom crop calendar, which we're going to take a look at here in a brief little bit. For that, let's go ahead and take a look at our PDA. As one can quickly tell, this is predominantly a forestry map with some fields intermixed. But I have to say, the fields that are here really are nice. And I think you could really, really have a fun time on this map, even if you just exclusively did farming. Now, this map is missing some main crops. Again, this map does not have sugarcane, cotton, olives, or grapes. So you're not going to be able to plant any of those, nor are you going to be able to sell any of those. But we do have our red beets, carrots, and parsnips if you are playing with the premium expansion. We go ahead and take a look at our lands overview. We start off by owning farmland ID number one. That is the main starting farm that can be bought for $142,000 in any alternate game mode. We also own farmland number two for $31,295. In addition to those two farmlands, farmland ID 58 is a horse farm. It can be bought for $48,825. And then farmland ID 16 is a sheep farm, and it can be bought for $126,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This screen shows us all of the viable farmlands, how large they are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, and then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? You see we have a fair bit of viable forestry areas, and those are going to be indicated by the fact that they have no fields associated with them whatsoever. So we're going to be able to make quite the fortune with respect to forestry on this map. Let's go ahead and take a look at our crop counter. And as you can see, we have quite a unique crop schedule here with separate planting seasons for wheat and barley. And then a rather combined grass, oilseed radish, poplar, pretty much throughout the entire year. And then we have our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Taking a look at our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game crops that are included on this map. We are not going to be taking off points for the lack of sugarcane, cotton, olives, or grapes. While they are excluded from the map, they are also excluded from the prices screen. So you're not going to be able to sell anything that you can't grow. We do also have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay straw, and grass. As we continue to look down through our base game production items, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items on this map as well. 
One thing that we do not have the ability to do is we do not have buy points for bulk lime, nor do we have a area to sell stones if we play with stones enabled. So if you do wanna do that, you will need to put down your own stone processing area. We have custom production in stack of boards and yarn. And then with respect to the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items, which is a little bit of a downer, given the fact that this is such a prominent forestry inspired map. Now with respect to our premium expansion, we do indeed have the ability to sell premium expansion productions and crops. And if you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability to sell our separated manure. With respect to our starting fleet, we start out with a modest starting fleet in new farmer mode. It's all new. None of it is leased. We do have one cow barn at the starting farm location, although we do not have any animals in that barn. We do have contracts on fields that we do not own. We do not own any of the production points that are available on the map, and this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Valtra Valmet 8750 medium tractor. We have a Dutzfar Topliner 4090H harvester. That's going to be paired up with the Topliner 4090H grain header, as well as the 4090H header trailer. We have a brand new TA23065 2 Power 2 Plus trailer. We have an Agrimaz POV 5XL plow, as well as the Ponja Terrasem C6F cedar, and the Kelsa 144 ND forestry logging trailer. We have a Howard XB 190 front loader arms, and for the front loader arms, we have the Albert Universal Bucket. And that is going to wrap up our starting fleet. We do not have any leased items, and taking a look at our mods and DLCs page, you will see that this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. I'm just going to quickly tab over to our starting farm location. Got our tractor lined up here. Nice machine shed store it in the back now i will warn you that you may suffer some issues with frames on this map because of the density of trees now i do have custom graphic settings so it may be that since i do have as far view distance as possible with the game set up that my experience is a little bit different than what your experience may be, depending on your graphic settings. But I am detecting a little bit of a, a minor stutter with respect to frames on my monitor. I think it's gonna be coming through pretty clear and pretty smooth on the video though. With respect to the horse barn, we can hold a total of 40 cows in this area. Not the horse barn, the cow barn. Sorry about that. We have our dump point for our straw and food. This is gonna be our, most likely our milk pickup point. We have our slurry point and our manure heap over here on the side. Just totally, oh my gosh, this map is just beautiful. Just totally beautiful. I find myself walking up to the edge of the forest and just looking. I don't know, the contrast, the way the trees are, the density of the trees, it's just, it just stands out extremely well as just very unique and it just gives off that vibe of realism that you really don't get on lots of other maps. I mean, just look at that. Right? Over here we have our farm silo. We have our dump point. We have our slurry storage tank. And then across the road here, I like this fence. It's a really cool fence. We have the farmhouse. Got a little bit of a garage. And I guess you wouldn't 
you wouldn't have a finish area without a hot tub or kind of steaming area. We got our sleep trigger and then we have our wardrobe trigger right there. Now with respect to the farm being customizable, the farmhouse we can sell, this little shed we can sell, the little garage building we can sell, all the buildings across the street we can sell or across the drive. What we can't sell are these deco elements, but given the fact that these deco elements are tucked away in the woods here, they're kind of out of the way. I'm kind of inclined to not take off any points as a result of that. So with respect to the farms being customizable, I'm going to go ahead and state yes, all of the three viable farms are customizable. And the fact that you can't get rid of those deco elements, I really don't think that's going to matter too much because if you are wanting to do any customization, it's most likely going to be over here on this side of the road. Let's go ahead and take a look at build mode. Since we do have those two required mods, we should find some placeable buildings that are a part of those included in build mode. We also have a couple sheds that are built into the map themselves. We have our farmhouse. Interesting sleep trigger there. We have our standard productions. We do have a placeable spinnery. The spinnery is pre-placed on the map as well. We have a custom cow barn. Right, that's this barn right here. And then with respect to landscaping, fairly standard brown textures. I think we'll go ahead and paint these down just to take a look at them. We have our animal mud. Our asphalt, which is going to be this gravelly textured dirt. Forest ground, grass, and rock. And then we have our plants. We have birch forest foliage, pine forest foliage, and spruce forest foliage. We have our brown textures. Lots of ambient sounds also. I don't know if you hear those. But yeah. Now I mentioned that this map does have a custom soil map. So let's go ahead and see how it is being applied to these fields. Our starting fields one and two are all loam, as well as a lot of fields down here to the south of the map, but then a fair bit of the fields to the north are either a mix of sandy loam, loamy sand, or silty clay. Let's get a little bit of altitude, and I think at that point we'll be able to really appreciate the amount of trees that are on this map. Now, way off in the distance, there are no trees showing up, but that is all forestry over there on the far side. So we're now looking all the way across the northern part of the map. We can see our fields over here now. And we see how dense this forest truly is. So up here on the hillside, we do have kind of a grass area and a field. Let's go ahead and make our way across the southern edge of the map. Now looking across to the north. And we are coming up to the sheep farm. Now we're going to be buying the sheep farm and taking a look at that when we get to our drive around portion of the video.
We have our sawmill located below. And then just north of the sawmill, we have a log south point, which is right here at the lake's edge. And then we have a placeable area. Let me put down more production or another farm area. To the north side of the lake, we have a sell point for products. Just gonna dive down here. See that? It's kind of a cafe area. That's the name of it. And then coming across this way, can you get appreciation of all the forested areas? While the trees aren't populated all the way across the map again, that's just based on view distance. As we keep going, those trees are populating in, and we are far, far higher than any one player has any real right to be without using dev mode commands. We have our heating plant cell point here for wood chips and logs. Right here we have our vehicle dealer, animal dealer, and a bale cell point. We have a grocery cell point as well as a secondary cell point. Our fueling station is located right here by field 26. This map has three productions built in. We've already seen the sawmill. Now we are making our way up to the carpentry and spinnery area. But before we get to that, we have the horse farm located right here. And then just past that, we have our carpentry and spinnery. And then over here, we have the train cell point. So we have a rent train icon right over there. These are just deco buildings. But this is where we're going to come in order to rent the train to sell products on the train. Let me go ahead and make my way back over to our garage. We'll go ahead and pick up a Hendra and I'll buy the two other farm areas so we can drive around to those and hit the productions and just kind of get a good overview of what this map looks like from the ground level. Here at our vehicle dealer, we have our dealer trigger at the main building. Let's go ahead and pick up that Mahindra. Let me do this so we can see where vehicles spawn in at. And it gives us a nice view of the map from inside. So we have our Mahindra here. Really decent sized area for our vehicles to spawn in at. We have a bale cell point as well as our animal dealer located right here. And then at this side building, this is where we're going to find our dealer trigger for maintenance, repair, customization, repainting, and etc. Let's just jump in, cab a little bit, and drive around a little from this perspective. North of the vehicle dealership, we have our biomass heating plant again. And like I said, you just look at this forest. It's just... I don't know. It's it's just that much better than every other forest that you really have seen to date. So we've got our wood chip cell point. We also have a wood cell trigger there for logs. Yeah, you've got roads like this, access lanes back in here to get to fields and other areas. Moss-covered boulders and everything. Oh, I just, I just love coming back to fields that are back in a wooded area. 
We've got custom trees, moss growing on them. Little details like that really do add up. Let's check landscaping trees. I skipped over that. Let's see if we have these custom trees that we can place. No, we do not. Now, speaking of trees and placing trees, there is absolutely no way you're going to be able to place trees on this map as a console player until you probably clear out at least three quarters of the map because there is a tree limit and this map is going to be well over that tree limit before you're going to be able to plant anymore. So we have two green cell points located right here. On PC, you can probably get away by adding the more trees mod, which just ups the the tree limit. If you did want to actually plant more trees, here we have our fuel point. I know from time to time we'll get a comment in a video about not being able to plant trees. And typically they're on forestry maps when that does come up. Uh, and that's because we're just way, way over the tree limit. It, it helps explain why Giants delivered maps are often so sparsely populated with trees. They are maintaining their map below their predetermined tree limit. So players, if they wanted to, could plant a reasonable number of trees not run up against that particular limit now with respect to our scoring system we are going to give the map this a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we do have three production places built in the carpentry sawmill and spinnery we also do have a area where we could put down additional placeables so this is our horse farm. I mentioned I was going to buy it earlier and I just completely got sidetracked. So let's go ahead and... And our horse farm. So we hold 10 horses in this facility. We have our water point. We have our food trough. We have our wardrobe and a sleep trigger here at the farmhouse. A couple little outbuildings. We have an exercise area over here. And again, we can sell all of this stuff if we want to. If we want to do something else with this particular area. from that we're going to take this lane it's going to take us back to the train cell point where we can rent the train some old train docks You're going to need to put your own ramps down here in order to sell a train or do something else. Now, oh, there's something there. Oh, there goes the train. Okay, so right. Watch this. I don't really know what this is, but it's phasing out. So right here where the Mahindra is. Right here. Okay. I don't think I can keep a camera on it. As we back away from there, something spawns in. Right there it is. And I can't really tell what it is from over here. If we get too much closer to it, it just fades away. It's like the reverse of the trees, right? As you get closer, the trees come in. 
this as you get closer it just fades away there's a couple more of these things right here as we drive up out of here too and I really love to know what they might possibly be it may just be the view distance on that plant is bigger and then we get closer and the resolution pops in I thought it might be something cool like uh, like wildlife that's supposedly running away or something I don't know if you're the map developer I would love to hear if that's an intended feature or maybe just a byproduct of the different view distances of that particular foliage now, with respect to the ability to sell all our basing props, production items, and animal outputs, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be giving the map a full point there as well. Even though we have no sugarcane, cotton, olives, or grapes in this map, they have been physically removed from the map in its entirety, and therefore, there's no way to sell it, there's no way to grow it, and really, that's all I'm really worried about is people growing things they ultimately cannot sell. So here we have our carpentry. We have our wood drop-off point, our wood cell trigger, our interactive icon, and our pallet spawn point. Across the street from that, we have the spinnery. So again, we have our dump point, interactive point around the front, and pallet around the back. that ambient sound was, if it's just a sick goose or what. We got a little bit of a drive here. As we make our way down to the sheep area. We mentioned already, can the farms be customizable? We give the map a full point. The only things that really are not sellable are kind of out of the way and wouldn't really impact your ability to customize the player areas anyway. Right, we're coming up here, we need to hang a left. this intersection and go straight this should whip us down to the sheep farm I get a sense that the way these forests are set up right like if you're out in the middle of the forest and it starts to get dark it's gonna get dark real quick in the forest Right, as opposed to if you then find your way out, right, it would, it would open up because of how dense those trees are. Here we have a sheep farm. A couple little fields down here. So we have our wardrobe, we have our sleep triggers. We can hold 80 sheep in this building, or facility, pasture, whatever you want to call it. Water, food, wool, and a little shed to go along with it. Now let's double back. And hang a left at the fork. Or it looks like a four way. Then we'll make our way over to the sawmill. Here, kind of the mountainy 
terrain. This ought to be a fun, fun map to forestry in for sure. Multiplayer forestry map. You know, and then if you had somebody that really just wanted to do a little farming, they could do that as well. These little offshoots take you back into the woods. So we've got our dump point for our logs. We have our interactive icon, our wood cell trigger. And then we have our pallet spawn point located right there. We have our fill point for our wood chips located right here and there. And then we'll turn left and make our way to the log cell point at the lake's edge. That is right here. One final point of interest, which is going to be the cafe cell point on the north side of the lake. So with respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique, I'm going to give the map a full point there as well. These buildings are using the new parallax technique. Here we've got that placeable area I mentioned in the flyover. We are also seeing that technique with the ground textures and such. And so we can put another forestry themed building down here. Maybe some of the platinum expansion production, if you wanted to do that. Then with respect to player and character, player and interactive areas being clearly marked we're going to give the map a full point there also. So that's going to give this map a full score of 5 out of 5. It hits on all the marks with respect to our scoring metric. Let me know down in the comments below, does it hit on all of your marks for being a map that you want to try out and you're interested in giving your next playthrough on? Let me know what your thoughts are again on this map itself, on forestry themed maps in general. And until next time, happy farming. Thank you.